Texas and Texas Tech turns. And the Red Raiders have won three straight games. Now let's check in with Tom Stanton and get one last win in the Big 12. Well, there's, there's so much that's coming into the game. On the road, want to make sure we bring it back home. You've played outstanding defense versus a run all year. Because uh, we're going to need to deploy some safety help for these big wideouts outside. All right, thanks. Good luck. Last year, they were ranked coming into the season, but they struck 13. Texas won the toss and deferred. He downplayed the rivalry. He said they haven't talked about it at all. Each inside that Texas Tech locker room with DK. Texas is ranked seventh. Texas was number one in pregame. If you get my drift, and that got the uh, Longhorn fans fired up. Here's Dre McCray on the return. Gets past the 20 and dragged down at the 22 by Austin Jordan. So Baron Morton started six games this year. He's five and one, and the only loss came in a game in which he got hurt against Kansas State. He hurt his shoulder initially in the third game of the season, his third or his first play in that game. He replaced Tyler Shuck, who was the starter at the beginning of the year. Morton started four games last year. Not only is he ranked 156 in the ESPN 300 two years ago, he's the highest rated quarterback recruit at Texas Tech, and that includes Patrick Mahomes. Borden going to throw a receiver screen on first down to the running back, Taj Brooks. Knocked out of bounds. They're going to have to get creative against this Texas defense. Awfully hard to do what they do best with just running it between the tackles. And Zach Kittley, the young offensive coordinator, they've got to change the identity of who they are offensively. So we've got an injury here on the opening play of the game. Looks like Ryan Watts. Now he faced injury earlier in the season. We mentioned this kind of teased into the open, but some of the injuries this year for Texas include Jonathan Brooks, who two weeks ago tore his ACL on Saturday Night Football against TCU. So they have a true freshman running back in C.J. Baxter, who they love, but obviously Brooks is out for the year. Quinn Ewers, their quarterback, is back. He missed time due to injury. They've been able to overcome those injuries for the most part this year. Ryan Watts has been a player that's been banged up throughout the course of the season. They've had a lot of different guys shaken up in the secondary of this defense. He's got great size and physicality out there at corner. And there's Brooks, who tore the ACL on his right knee in the second half of that win against TCU, a game in which Texas almost let the lead slip away. Happened against Kansas State. They're up 20. Wildcats crawled back, ended up forcing overtime. But Texas still won those games. The one loss came against Oklahoma, 34 to 30, and they won five in a row since. The last time they won six straight games was the last time they appeared in the Big 12 championship game, and that was back in 2018. They're still looking at Watts. We'll step away for a moment and return to Austin. What even is this? Don't touch my thing. So Ryan Watts up, which is a great sign because he was flat on his back for about three minutes. But walking under his own power, very encouraging after we saw him go down about five minutes ago. Here he is, he's gonna fight through a block and then he'll make some contact with the back of Anthony Hill Jr. It's tough to tell exactly what happened, but to your point, Dave, great to see him able to walk off the field under his own power. He was down for a while, a scary situation here to kick off this game. But Anytime you see him move a player, that yeah. gives you some hope, and they did. Like I mentioned, he was on his back for a while, then they moved him to, or on his front for a while, then they moved him onto his back for a couple minutes, but hopefully Watts is okay. So one-yard gain on that screen pass to Taj Brooks, his 21st catch of the season. He's in the backfield now on second down and nine. Morton on the move, and pass is incomplete, as Xavier White could not come up with that, certainly looked like a catchable ball, third down. Shot taken by Barrett Morton, remember as you touched on earlier, going back 
Ten West Virginia game, a grade three AC joint separation. He even told us earlier this week that throughout the course of the game, changes how good he feels already goes to the ground on the second play of the game. Son of a coach, his dad James, longtime high school coach in Lubbock and also at Eastland as that back shoulder throw is off the line, incomplete, going for Coy Aiken who's become a recent favorite target of Morton and coverage that time Malik Muhammad the guy that replaced Ryan Watts Muhammad a true freshman yeah just Barry Morton off target here his favorite target as you touched on they go way back They've got a great chemistry with one another but I passed not even close to his intended target Coy Aiken Austin McNamara one of the top punters in the country almost got that blocked Xavier Worthy's got a punt return for a touchdown already this season. And scoots out of play here at the 43. Just a 41-yard punt because of the pressure on McNamara. He's sixth in the country, averaging about 48 yards of boot. There's an injured Texas Tech player at the 35-yard line. So we played less than a minute. We've already had two stoppages for injuries and Knotts is the long snapper on punts for Texas Tech now Texas wins the Big 12 regular season crown and has a spot in the Big 12 championship game next week with a win, a loss, and they will need some help. Games tomorrow, obviously. In Students. For Junior organizing a turkey giveaway earlier this week for those in need in Lubbock. He is a finalist for the Pop Warner Award, which goes to the individual who most impacts his community and impacts youth. He's very involved in his community and also Wants to get into law enforcement when his playing days are over. Quinn Ewers is back, his third game back from that shoulder injury that cost him two games. Malik Murphy won games against BYU and Kansas State after Ewers hurt his shoulder against Houston last month. He's going to throw on first down. It's caught by Xavier Worthy to the 44 of Texas Tech. That's the 66th catch for Worthy, third of the Big 12 in receptions. Well, Texas runs the football so effectively, just putting that ball in the belly of C.J. Baxter gets those linebackers up, middle of the field's wide open, and a strike from Quinn Ewers. 20th career start for Ewers. 14-5 and five record. Transfer from Ohio State. Gonna hand it off to Baxter here. Baxter able to get back to the line of scrimmage. That Texas Tech defense much improved this year. They're only giving up 24 points per game. That's their best mark since 2009. No game as a data ray made the stop. Ten DeRooters did a really nice job with this defense. They can move their fronts. They change their coverage. Going to try to disguise a lot here for Quinn Ewers. Second down and ten. Tech rushes three, Ewers again over the middle, wide open is Worthy for the second time and he is able to squeeze his way through defenders to get the first down, a gain of 12. What's well, rush three, drop eight, zone coverage, and Xavier Worthy, Worthy finds the open spot in the zone, turns around, ball is on him immediately. Xavier Worthy so dynamic with the ball in his hands or when the ball is in the air. Got great speed and tough to tackle in the open space. He was hurt last week. They weren't sure early in the week whether he would play. And they weren't sure about Jatavion Sanders either. He got hurt in the win against Iowa State last week, but healthy enough to go today. And he takes it down near the 15-yard line. Jatavion Sanders, such a tough cover for a linebacker for a safety. And he's working on a true freshman at star, Brendan Jordan, who will be playing a lot here tonight. And you see the ball skills and the catch radius. Just put it up and let that talented tight end go make a play. So first down on the Tech 16. Baxter's second rush between the tackles downhill to about the 11. Tackled by a data ray again. Baxter was the starter at the beginning of the year. Suffered through a couple of injuries, ended up losing 
the spot to Jonathan Brooks, who, by the way, is in the top ten in rushing and a Doak Walker semifinalist. Last week, Baxter had a career day, 117 yards. Gets the carry here, and down to the five, getting a first down for the Longhorns. First and goal. With good movement, back-to-back -back plays on the right side of the offensive line. D.J. Campbell, Christian Jones really coming off the football. And C.J. Baxter, he's got size, physically imposing, excellent burst, Tom. I know coming out of high school, he was one of your favorites. Yeah, I loved him. You don't see Bax his size that have the lateral quickness and agility that he has. You saw it right there. Great feet to and through the hole. Number one running back recruit in the country. Some movement. Texas Tech jumped into the neutral zone, but were they forced to do that? False start. Offense number 70. Five-yard penalty. First down. It's Christian Jones, who playing his final home game in Texas, his 46th career start. Missed one game this year due to injury. The only Texas offensive lineman to miss any action this year. I'll tell you, he has been playing the best football of his career. I mean, he, he struggled at times early on in his career. He's found a home at right tackle, really dedicate himself and playing with great physicality, getting good movement up front. First and goal from just outside the 10 after the five yard penalty. Play action pass out in space. Robinson. comes here in Austin against Texas Tech. Bert Auburn, 97 of 97 for his career on extra points. After a seven-play, 56-yard drive that took just over three and a half minutes, Texas on the board first. Well, it starts with the motion from Jordan Whittington, a staple of what Sark wants to do. And watch Keelan Robinson just going to sneak his way outside. They're going to motion over, then work his way back across. Jordan Whittington, Adonai Mitchell, going to be lead blockers on the perimeter. And Keelan Robinson is an absolute jet. So much speed and explosiveness on the perimeter. And this is vintage. Steve Sarkeesian utilizing motion create the matchup that he wants get the ball to his playmakers out in space and caps off a picturesque perfect drive to kick off this big night here in Austin. It's really rush your poison isn't it guys sorry Dave you, you see the mismatch he gets going on between the run game action in the backfield then the players in space they're just so talented at all the spots you don't know where to defend. It was a great mix right there, Tom. Throwing the football, getting the ball to Xavier Worthy, Jatavion Sanders. You get a little dose to C.J. Baxter, and then a touchdown to Keelan Robinson. McCray on the return. Tripped up at the 10, grabbed at the 15, and down he goes. Take a look around the CFP landscape as we count down to the CFP National Champ. Clear his pass for Texas to find their way in the college football playoff. They changed that Robinson touchdown to a rushing touchdown. That was a backward pass. No room there for Taj Brooks. They tried to run him between the tackles for the first time, and he's bottled up at the point of attack. Byron Murphy on the interior of this defensive line is so good. Watch him just penetrate. Disrupt everything in the middle. Doesn't make the tackle, but he makes the play. Allow Jade Barron Sorrell to get on the tackle. You better have a plan for number 90 and number 93 when you play this Texas defense. Out of the backfield, Brooks. Stood up by Jalen Ford and then gang tackle at the 18-yard line. A little extra curricular activity and there's a flag. It's going to go on Anthony Hill Jr., I think. It's a little bit amped up here tonight. You could tell Texas is taking the field with some serious intensity. The motions might have got the most of Anthony Hill Jr. here at the end of this play. That would give Texas Tech a first down. And plays like that can change momentum. And 
after the play was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number zero. That's his first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. See if Anthony Hill is taunting Taj Brooks after the tackle, and that's why he got flagged. Yeah, can't do that. And lean over, yelling at the player on the ground's face, kind of got a knee in there. Just, again, a lot of intensity, a lot of emotion. Got to keep it in check. Here's Brooks, got some room off the edge. Lowers the shoulder on the defender. And a gain of about eight yards. That's a hard run. Brooks leads the country in forced missed tackles. That's 87 now on the year. So tough to tackle. 5'10", 230. He's a bowling ball with really good vision and contact balance. Morton now running. And he dies for the first down of the 45. Tripped up by Derek Williams. Talked about how a play that shouldn't happen that in sportsmanlike conduct where you're just asking for a penalty you can change momentum quickly and now Tech on the move but Morton is hit however he's not sacked he gets out of there and his pass is caught near midfield by Mason Tharp and he gets positive yardage a gain of about five Ethan Burke should have had a sack well I'll tell you what just the fact that Baron Morton evades the initial defender Burke and finds his quick six foot nine tight end what a play Morton in trouble again. He's got a receiver downfield. And it's picked off. What a great play by Muhammad. Morton had a receiver, but the ball hung in the air. The field is an interception by the Jordan Bradley was open, but Muhammad with the interception. Well, inside pressure coming in from Alfred Collins. Hits. 